we have Katrina Howard coming to be baptized. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He laughs himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. He trembles at his voice, he trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me how great. Is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. And age to age he stands, 
and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God in three and one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. Join us. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Name of all names, worthy of all praise, Heart will sing how great is our God. Name above all names. Sing it again, that little. Name above all names. Worthy of our praise. Our heart will sing how great is our God. Kingdoms 
will all pass away, but there's something about that Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Yes, yes, for baptism today. Let me get my act together. You get your act together. Go ahead and join me in uh, Revelation as we have been there for a few weeks. We continue in our Revelation. What's next? Because that question, what next, is on the minds and hearts of so many people. I run into them almost every week asking that question. They want to know what's next. What, what can we expect? Uh, what's God up to? Uh, what's God got in the future for us as we find it in Revelation? And, and Revelation is not a book to be afraid of. It, it's a bu book to be in awe of and to respect, but also as first chapter tells us, blessed is he or she who what? Who reads it, who listens to it, and who obeys it. God's promised blessing. So we know that you're doing that because you've faithfully been coming to worship. And let me just pause and welcome our online community of faith. We're so glad to have each one of you uh, joining us for worship and you that are here uh, for worship. We, we're excited that you're here. Uh, it's good to see you this morning. There were a couple announcements that I needed to remind you of. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that. One in particular is kick, today is the kickoff of phase two of our uh, plan of regathering and we're going to start a Sunday school class for adults come on and for children yeah yeah for adults and for children uh, the adult Sunday school class will be here after worship we'll wait probably about 10 after 11 to get it started to give you a chance to to go uh, take care of going to the bat restroom and whatever else you may need to speak to someone and then the Sunday school class for the children is going to be outdoors and so children, uh, you'll want to make your way. Parents, you help them get find their way over to the, me, uh, me right outside the exit door. Uh, Trish and uh, uh, Phyllis is going to be teaching you today. And it's going to be a great time, children. You're going to have a wonderful time in Sunday school. Isn't it great that we get that start back being together for Sunday school? Can I get an amen? Uh, I know you've been looking, wanting that, looking forward to it, missing it tremendously. And uh, I'm excited that we're able to do that. And of course, we'll continue to uh, honor our, our COVID uh, guidelines uh, as we gather, uh, even for Sunday school and afterwards, after worship. But let's look at what God has to say. We're all going to look at five verses today. And all of you said, <laughs> all of you said, yeah, I'm going to try to keep it short today. So um, five verses. If you would, turn to chapter 8. Um, let me introduce it this way. You know, it's interesting. One of the basic uh, tenets in your life and my life is justice. Did you know that? In fact, you don't have to go very far. Just it's a, And it's a baffling thing for us, the idea of justice. It, it, it confuses us as Christians, not just Christians, but non-Christians as well. And uh, it, it's basic so much even a toddler knows uh, automatically will do what? A toddler will automatically cry out for justice when what? When his toy gets taken away by his brother. Amen? So justice is part of us. We have that in it understanding that of justice and the importance of justice, but we, we want it sometimes and sometimes we don't. And we're growing up in a day and time and we're living in a day and time in our world where there's so much cry for racial justice and social justice and and, and injustices that need to be addressed. And, and we got it all wrong when it comes to what the Word of God says about it. So I hope that you're going to be open today because Christians, we get confused about it. And I'm going to, I'm going to throw a question your way because we, we have a conflicting relationship with justice. Did you know that as, as people? Uh, and so I, I want, we have trouble distinguishing between God-centered cries for justice from selfish, petty prayers for retaliation. We have trouble differentiating between those two things as Christians. And so here's the question I want you to think about for a moment as we jump into this text. It's a good one to wrestle with, with this text today. How do we pray for grace for our enemies and justice for our enemies? 
How do you do both those? How do you pray for grace for those that have hurt you, wounded you, offended you, wronged you, and how do you pray justice for those individuals? That's a big question because uh, the way we answer it, guess what? It's going to reveal what you believe about, understand about God. And Revelation 8 helps us with that. Uh, not only it talks about what's going to happen in the future when God's judgment is going to come upon the earth, but it helps us today with this issue of grace with our enemies, pray for grace for our enemies, at the same time pray for justice for our enemies. So let's look at it, verse 1. Uh, if you remember, chapter 8, we return back to the six, to the seals, the seven seals, and we're back to the seventh seal. Remember, chapter. if you go back to chapter 6, uh, Jesus, who was the only one that's going to be able to open up the scroll, and I want you to picture that. That's important to picture that as we look at this today. Jesus has the only one that is able to open the scroll in heaven in the future we're talking about. He's going to be able to open the scroll. And what's interesting in this text is evidently implies that everybody in heaven, the 24 elders, uh, the uh, angels, and all that have all believers that have died and gone to heaven, they're all going to be able to see what is being said in the scroll. What, what They're going to be able to hear it. They're going to be able to see it. And so you need to keep that in mind as we look at this today. But I want to focus on two key elements when it comes to justice. As it relates to the question I just asked you, how do you pray grace for your enemies and how do you pray justice for your enemies? And so look at verses 1 through 5. Let me read them for us real quick. When the Lamb opened the seventh seal... There was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before God. Evidently, those seven angels, let me interject this because I'm not going to spend any time on this today, but you need to know this. Evidently, there's hierarchy, there's ranking of angels in heaven. Amen? There are different ranks of angels. Paul addresses it over in some of his epistles. There's different ranks, and these angels, these seven angels, all their names begin with, I end with L, E L, right? Such as in Luke, Gabriel, uh, when he showed up uh, before the birth of Jesus. And so these are presence angels, they're known to be as. They're presence angels. So keep that in mind. I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. I thought about getting me a trumpet and playing it at this point, but I said, no, I'm going to do that to our folks. And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer, and he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all, circle that word all, of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Verse 5, Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth, and there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Let's pray. To pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we are thankful for your word. We thank you for your word because your word gives us guidance. Your word is a light unto our path, a light unto our life, and a lamp unto our our feet to guide us along the way. And so, Father, I pray right now as we enter to this, in, this incredible text before some horrible things are about to be unleashed on the earth in the future, Father, that we would get a grasp of justice and the right way to pray for our enemies, both grace for them, at the same time praying for justice. For God, we know that you hold the key. You're, it's in your hands, Father. You're the source of justice. So as we look at that today, give us deeper understanding into that. Holy Spirit, teach us from your word. Minister to our hearts. Bring change, transformation in our lives. From your word, God, today we pray. In Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's look at this. As I read verse 1, when the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence. That's a really long time. You ever tried it in a large crowd? This is heaven we're looking at here. They're, get, they're in heaven. Jesus has opened the scroll, and he's about to re read it about the seventh seal. 
And then the trumpets, the seventh seal introduces the trumpets that we're going to look at next week. And so picture this, in a crowd, all of a sudden, they've been having noise like crazy up in heaven. Come on. They've been worshiping the Lord. They've been celebrating the Lord. I want you to get the picture here. There's been a lot of noise in heaven up to this point. Uh, loud singing, loud noise, joyful noise. The four living creatures, the 24 elders, host of angels have been all praising God. Uh, the, the saints... As we looked at last week, persecuted Christians under the altar have been crying out, how long, Lord, how long before you bring justice, judgment to the earth? And all that's been going on. Tribulation believers we looked at last week have been standing and worshiping God. And then all of a sudden, there's silence. Once you get a hold of that in heaven for 30 minutes, that's not easy to do. Why don't you try it later today? Don't move, don't, don't do anything, and try just staying still for 30 minutes. It's not easy. It's tough to do, but that's what's going on in this text here in heaven in the future. It's before God unleashes his wrath, his judgment on the earth, there is a 30-minute pause. And I read, and it's a, that's a long silence, 30, 30 minutes, half an hour. Some have joked about this, saying that this shows uh, two things, that a lot of people who talk too much won't be in heaven. <laughs> uh, no, that's not true. But One guy said, I read this this week, one guy said, that proves my wife will not be there because she talks all the time. But, and those are jokes. And joke, putting all joking aside, half an hour doesn't sound long, uh, but again, try it. Say nothing, move around for, for 30, don't move around for 30 minutes. Here's the calm before the storm. That's what I want you to hear that's coming in the future. The calm moment in heaven where there's going to be silence for 30 minutes. And so what is that all about? We're going to unpack that uh, before the fall comes, before the judgment comes. So there's a hush in heaven. So why, why silence before judgment? Why in the world is God teaching us here about silence before judgment? Not only his judgment, but he's teaching us a lesson, hang with me, of how silence is important in your life before you bring judgment. Amen? Uh, or we want to try to bring judgment on someone. It's a, it's a silence in heaven of awe. At the same time, I think there's dread. Because why? Because everybody, I think since the beginning of creation, the angels and the 24 elders and uh, the living creatures, I think since the beginning of creation, they have been looking for this day that's about to come. They've been longing for this day. They've been wondering when it's going to come. And, and so uh, it, we know in the next several chapters, it's going to be very difficult for people on earth. It's going to be very difficult as we look at that in the weeks ahead. But know this, it's like the day has finally come. That's why they're silent. It's like, wow, it's finally here. And that means that saints are going to be vindicated, Satan will be destroyed, that sin will be done away with, and Jesus will reign and rule forever and ever. Can I get an amen? Amen. That's what we're looking forward to. And so there's good reason to be silent. Here's what I want you to note. Silence is clarifying the source of justice. Don't miss that. Silence is accenting the source of justice. So let's get real clear about who's bringing the justice. Exodus 14 is a great illustration of that. Moses, you know, they, they've, they've just, they're on the run from the, from the army, the Egyptian army, and they look over the hill and they see them and they're getting so despondent, they're getting so in despair, they're like, you know, and, and they're really starting to be upset big time with Moses, even though they hadn't fully expressed it to Moses. And, and the scripture says what? Uh, through, I mean, what God says through Moses, because he knows what's going on, that they're getting despondent and frustrated. Uh, they think that, that, that they shouldn't have left Egypt. You know, the, the army's going to overcome and, and going to kill them all. And what, is, what does God say through Moses? The Lord will what? Fight for you. You just only be what? Be what? Silent. Wow. And that's the same thing that's happening here. The Lord will fight for you, Moses said in Exodus 14. 
you have only to be silent. What that indicates there is that we are to be dependent on God when it comes to his justice. We are to be dependent on God when it comes to justice for our enemies and even pray in grace for our enemies. But we'll unpack that in just a moment. So silence directs our attention to the source. But number two, the character or the nature of the one who is behind the judgment or justice. Exodus 34, 6. Remember when God revealed his glory to Moses? This God was telling, telling them, he said, and he's speaking of himself. He says, God is merciful and gracious. Here it is. If you want to know the character of God today, this next phrase, he's what? He's slow to anger. Wow. Yeah, if you want to know God, who God is, there it is in that phrase right there. He is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Amen? God doesn't get miffed like we do. God doesn't get upset. He doesn't get peeved. He doesn't get ticked off. He doesn't get irate. He doesn't wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Anybody do that today? Don't raise your hands. He don't wake up on the wrong side of the bed every morning. You don't push his buttons. You can't catch God on a bad day. Amen. God's anger, here's my point. God's anger is so different from our anger. So different. I want you to think about that for a moment. God's anger is so different. It's purely righteous, his anger. You see, his love and, his ju and justice are inseparably intertwined. They're connected together. We have trouble with that. We struggle with that. Bringing our love and justice that we want to see happen together. And so I want to help you with that today. God helps us with that in this chapter. He's slow. If you What a beautiful description of who God is. He's slow to anger. In the silence before justice, he's showing us his nature in this text. You see, God is never in a hurry to judge. Can I get an amen? He is never in a hurry to judge. Unlike us, someone wrongs us, someone hurts us, we want judgment to come right away, don't we? If we're honest. But not God. He's, he's slow to it. Never in a hurry. And, and don't, don't picture God standing up in heaven wringing his hands. I just can't wait to get you. <laughs> Looking down on those on earth. He's not doing that. That's a non-unbiblical view of God. But some Christians have that view of God. That's not God. That's not true. It's not an accurate picture of God. One of God's main attributes is that he is long-suffering. Would you say that with me? Say it like that. Long-suffering. That's how you should say that word. You know what that word means? Patience. With those that need justice brought to them. Patience. You see, the Scripture says that God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Amen? He takes no, death, no pleasure in that. And so that's all at play here. The second prep, so you got the first prep is silence before judgment. That's why there needs to be silence in your life before you even begin to try to even pray grace and pray for justice. We'll come back to that question at the end. But secondly, the second prep is, for, is prayer. Look at verse 2 and 3. Look what it says there. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer, and he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of, did you circle that word? All the saints on the golden altar before the throne. That's a model there. Remember the tabernacle in the Old Testament? It's a model there, and you have to understand this to know what, he's, what God's saying here. Uh, what he's revealing to us that's going to happen in the future right before uh, terrible things are going to take place on this planet when his wrath, his judgment is unleashed. All the prayers. Did you notice what it says there? All the prayers. And so if you remember in the tabernacle, I'm going to try to do it real quickly, uh, and that's what we're really reading here, there were two altars. Two of them. There was altar on the outer court, Brass altar, that's where the animals were killed, where the sacrifices were, were burned. And then there was the golden altar, uh, much smaller in the holy place in front of the veil of the Holy of Holies, if you remember. And the priest would take a coal from the altar of sacrifice, 
put it in that little incense that's described here, burner, a censer that had a little bowl attached to it with a rope or a chain, and he would walk from the outer court of the tabernacle into the, to the holy place where the altar of incense was and put the coal on the altar and sprinkle incense on it and it would represent asking God to atone for the sins of the people. And that's what this picture is here. Notice it says all the saints. All the, it's not just all the saints in heaven at this time. That's all. That's you. That's me. That word all there is all prayers of past, present believers that have prayed. All wrapped up and are symbolized here in this action. God is answering the prayers of his children when it comes to the judgment that he's going to bring on the earth. Amen? That's why we've got to look at that. How do you pray? Grace for enemies. At the same time, how do you pray right? How do you, how do you pray justice for your enemies, for those that have, done, have wronged you in some way? And so that's what's going on here, uh, praying for all the saints. You know, God, you ever think about that? You know, wait a minute, Brother Dave. God hears my prayers, but sometimes I, I, I don't feel like my prayers get above the ceiling. Well, that, there's one reason in particular that you may feel that way is because there's unconfessed sin in your life. If you feel like your prayers aren't getting above the ceiling, it's because you've got some unconfessed sin. But here, uh, I want you to in, I want to emphasize that he hears all prayers. Doesn't mean he doesn't hear it, but it, he hears it and he answers in, in what one of two ways, basically, right? The one way we like to hear him answer is what? <laughs> yes, yeah, we like that one. But then he answers no. And part of no is it's not time. You need to wait. It's not time for the answer to come. And it may not be the answer that you're expecting, that you want. And so we understand that, but here's the picture. You got it, It's not like God's saying, where did I put your prayer in heaven? God's not running, walking around heaven thinking, where in the world did I put that prayer that they prayed for that person that really wounded him when he was preaching at Gaumont? Where did God go around heaven looking for prayers? Amen. He hears all prayers. He listens to all prayers. That's what you need to get out of this that God wants you to see. And he's going to respond. Final judgment is his direct response to the prayers of God's people. Oh, wow. Let that hang on your heart for a moment. Final judgment that we're going to read in the next few chapters that's going to come on the earth is going to be the direct response to your prayers, to our prayers, to the prayers of all of God's people down through the ages. See, God answers every prayer of his people by justice. You know, the how long, O oh Lord, has an answer. Some of you, you've been, at, you've been asking God that, right? How long, God, before you're going to, going to take care of what has been done to me? How long, Lord, as, as under the altar, the the saints up in heaven right now are crying that out 24-7. Uh, every whisper in the dark, hear me, church, believer, every whisper in the dark, every agonizing, helpless cry for justice will be heard. Come on. Let's give God a hand for that. Yes. Yes. He will hear it. And so the next time you're in a prayer meeting at church, and we're kicking that off, by the way, Wednesday night. So I hope that you will come and join us for prayer time. We're going we're gonna to pray for the needs of people, intercessory prayer. We're going to get on our knees. We're going we're gonna to anoint. We're going to lay hands on. We, there's some folks that need hand laying on. And the anointing prayer, the, the agreement prayer uh, for healing. Amen? And I hope if you know someone or you need healing in your life, you'll come Wednesday night. Uh, I'm seeing and believing we're going to have a change in our prayer meeting. Amen? Really, and some of it a result of, of what we've been in with this uh, virus. But I'm believing for us as a church that we're going to see incredible times of prayer as a body of believers. And uh, I'll address more of that uh, on, on Wednesday nights. But I hope you'll join us. But notice here, uh, you know, he's got track of all your prayers. 
No prayer is ever lost of a child of God. Sometimes you may think that. Oh, God didn't get it. God didn't hear it. But He has. He answers your prayers. If you're walking in fellowship with Him and you're obeying Him, He answers your prayers. All of your prayers. Yes, yeah, some of them are no. <laughs> or or you got to wait uh, for God's purposes and plan to take place. But what are these prayers? Lastly, what are these prayers specifically and how does God answer them? What The prayer to pray grace for, those, for our enemies and at the same time to pray what? Justice would come for those enemies. Because how many of you know in the Old Testament, and we always sh struggle with this, God was very clear about judgment on people and praying for that. The Israelites calling on them to pray. David, pray in Psalms, praying for wrath to come on his enemies. Do you remember reading that in the Psalms? We don't like doing that. That's why we tend to like to focus on the New Testament. But it's even in the New Testament. <laughs> we'll look at that in just a moment. And so, what are these? Look at verses 5 and 6 and you get a hint. Look at them together. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar. And threw Notice what's happened. Before in the tabernacle, that was taken to the Holy of Holies. But in the future, that censer is going to be thrown where? Down on the earth. It's not going to be taken into the presence of God. It's going to be thrown down to the earth. And there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Do you know what God's saying there? It's really also a picture of what happened on the Day of Atonement in the Old Testament. You read about it. High priest took the coal. He put it in the censer. He walked inside the holy place, if you remember, and put the coal on the altar, put incense on it. He had blood from the altar on one hand, and then he took the censer in the other hand. And once that incense had burned in that censer, he walked in with the fire burning there of the incense and the blood, and he presented it before the Lord God and it would atone for the sins of the people. Do you see? Sin was judged there in the Holy of Holies. Well, now you have the picture in the same way the censer is going to be thrown down on the earth and the judgment is going to come on the sins of those on the earth that have resisted God, that have rebelled from God, that have not given their life to follow God and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's what he's describing. So, uh, God is going to bring justice. Amen? We're going to read about it in the next several chapters. So, back to the question. How do we pray grace for our enemies and justice? pray justice for our enemies? Here it is. When a Christian prays, you might want to jot this down. When a Christian prays for justice, he prays two ways. She or he. Pray short-range prayer and long-range prayer. Let me give them to you real quick. First of all, short-range prayer. Someone's wronged you. Someone's offended God. We're praying for that person. We pray for justice for that person. And here's what we pray that's grace. Short-range. We pray that God would bring justice in the same way that he brought it to you. And how did God bring justice to you? Through Jesus Christ. That's how you pray for those that have wounded you. Short-range prayer. That's for grace. The same grace that God has shown to you and when you did, you, God could have unleashed His justice on you in times in your life in the same way that God took that away, put it on Jesus, amen? He put it on Jesus. In the same way we're to pray. When someone has wronged us or offended God. You see, it's on Jesus. Jesus absorbed my punishment. Didn't he absorb your punishment? Yeah, on the cross. So why? Why? So I could experience grace. Say grace. Grace. That's why. That's why he took on the injustices in my life and that my need for justice in my life. He took it on so that I could experience grace. Wow. That's why short range prayers is always this. God, I want everyone to have that that I have. God, I want everyone to have that. I want everyone to have, God, what I've experienced. That is grace. 
You even pray that for your enemies. Amen. Are you with me, church? That's short range. That's praying grace for your enemies. Now, how do you pray justice? Number two, long range prayer. If that person you're praying for refuses to receive the offer of grace in Christ Jesus, they have in a sense made the decision for the burning coals of judgment that we read about in chapter 8 next week to be unleashed on them. Are you with me? And so you pray. Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 1. You know, coals of judgment are indications in the Old Testament of God's purifying work, refining work in people's lives. And so keeping that in mind, 2 Thessalonians 1 really gives us the picture Paul does. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven, and he's really referring to this here, when the Lord Jesus, about to happen, when, when he comes, when, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in a flaming fire, afflicting, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know him and on those who do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, there's a time coming in Revelation that we're going to read about in the, in the near weeks of his coming to earth and bringing the wrath, His wrath, God's wrath, upon the earth. And so we need to understand there's short-range prayer, grace for that person that's hurt you. That's not easy to do, I admit that, but that's what we have to do. If we want to experience the true meaning of grace in our lives, we've got to pray that kind of prayer. The same grace that God's given me, He inflicted all the punishment I should have received on His Son Jesus. I got to pray in that in that same vein for those that have hurt me, wounded me, offended God in my life. So, what can we do today? Well, obviously, it's two things: practice silence, practice silence, and then prep for in our preparation for judgment. It's coming. Are you with me, believers? God is going to make all injustices right one day. Can I get an amen from the house of the Lord today? God is going to bring every, make everything wrong right one day. And we have to keep, that's the hope that we have. We have to cling to that hope. We have to live in that hope with those that offend us, those that offend God, those that have wounded us or hurt us. Because why? Because silence allows us to hear, hear me, that our prayer has been heard. When you're silent, it will allow you to hear that God has really heard your prayer. And that God remains what? As the scripture says, the just, God is just, but he's also the justifier. Not us. God is just perfect in his justice and God is the only one that can justify the wrongs. Amen? The word is clear. God will bring short range justice so we pray for revival. We need to be praying for revival right now in our nation. We need to be praying for our president, praying for healing from the virus and his wife and some of his close associates up there that have come down with it. We need to be praying. We need to be praying for our nation that our nation would see the need to turn back to God. To repent. Repentance is the prayer we need to be praying. But let's not pray it for those out there until we pray it for ourselves first. Amen? Dave, Dave needs to repent. We, each of us need to repent. We need to get real with God about any and every areas in our lives. And so we need to do that. Pray for revival. That's the short-range justice prayer. Knowing that long-range justice is going to come. God's going to bring it. Every injustice made right. And see, that gives us hope, doesn't it? That's the hope that is ours. So we need to stop crying. <laughs> we need to stop arguing. We need to stop complaining. And I'm a, let me interject this. We need to get along with our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen? In the church. We need to get along with one another. We need to love one another. We need to be quick to forgive one another when we've been offended. Or you've been hurt in some way. Because the scripture makes it clear. Fear not. Stand firm. And see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. The Lord will fight for you. You have only to be 
silent. I'm going to invite you to be silent for a moment. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes with me? No talking, no moving. For some of you, you're already getting antsy in your seats, and it's only been a little over a minute. So as we come into this time of decision, I want to first extend an invitation to our online community as well as those of you who are here with every eye bowed and every eye closed. I'm the only one looking. I extend an invitation today to come to Jesus because Jesus is the way to heaven. Heaven is a prepared place. It's promised for those that have put their trust and faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord, and it's a precious place because Jesus says that his own hands that were nailed on that cross are preparing a place for every one of us in heaven. He wants you there. Oh, God wants every one of you there. Children, singles, young adults, married, older adults, he wants each and every one of his creation there in heaven. But... You have to make that decision. And so today, I invite you to make that decision. There's a Lamb's Book of Life that's going to be open. We're going to read about it in just a little bit. And if your name's not written in that Lamb's Book of Life, then the judgment will be that you have made the choice by not putting your faith and trust in Jesus as your Savior and Lord. You've made the decision, it's your choice, to not live with God forever in heaven, but to be eternally separated from God in hell. And maybe you're here today, a child, young adult, single adult, older adult, and you've not come to reality, come to really understand the, the significance of your choice, making your decision, not, you, not parents for you, but you making the decision to put your faith in Jesus Christ. And so I invite you right now, just where you are, if you're ready to do that, if you see the need that you've never never seriously considered where you're going to spend eternity and you've never made that decision to, to say I need Jesus I have, I'm, I'm a sinner and I need forgiveness for that sin I, need, I believe Jesus died for my sins and I in faith invite him into my life if you don't remember a time that you did that and you're ready to do that today would you just throw your hand up and just bring it back down I want to pray for you today is there anyone here today if you're listening online and that's your heart desire today. I'm going to pray for you as well. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers our sin, past, present, and future. And God, I'm lifting up those that may be online have come to realize that they need to put their trust in Jesus, not their trust in their own abilities, their own finances, their own knowledge, their own will, but to put their trust in Jesus alone for their salvation. And so I pray right now, Father, that they would take that step and just simply acknowledge that they are a sinner in need of salvation, that they, they, they would repent of their sin, that they would put their trust in Jesus and receive by faith what Jesus has done for them on the cross that you would just acknowledge that with God, your Father, your Creator right now. That you, by faith, receive Jesus into your heart and your life. And Jesus will come in in that moment. If that's a sincere heart as you pray that prayer, He will come in, He's promised. And He will bring about transformation in your heart and your life from the inside out. You don't have to do anything other than, than be obedient to His Word and to His will to get in His Word, to spend time in intimacy with Him through prayer, 
uh, to be in a body of believers, the church, to be connected where you can serve and use your gifts for his glory, for his purposes for your life. Uh, but he's going to change you from the inside out as you surrender to him. I rejoice with the angels if you made that decision today online. We'd love to know about it. Please let us know. Uh, phone number's there that you can connect with us and let us know if you made a decision to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord today. For others in-house here, maybe it's a child here today that's ready to make that decision. Uh, maybe it's an adult that's never made that decision. I'm going to be over here to the side and for the invitation and if there's a if there's someone here today that would like to talk with me about making that decision I'm available to you just come to me and I'd love to be able to help you with making that decision to give your life to Jesus Christ oh we thank you Lord help us to be silent prior to judgment and prep for judgment to pray grace at the same time may so realize that God, one day, your son Jesus is going to come and make all things right. Thank you, Jesus. We look forward to that day. We praise you for it, what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand for our invitation? And I'm going to be over here to the side. And if you'll just raise your hand if you need me to talk with you, and then I'm going to you come join me outside and I'll follow up with you for that decision that you need to make today. you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again amazing God how God can it be you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you died from hell for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. Sing it again, church. I'm forgiven. 
I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be? That my King would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. And my joy to honor you in all I do, I honor you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, for a thousand tongues to say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the glories of my God and King. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, I never shall forget that day. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When Jesus washed my sin away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.